Welcome to another episode of Chess Concepts for Intermediates. This is one of my games about a thousand ELO, now I'm 2000 almost. And in this video, we are going to look at the crazy opening and how to find a way to relax a little bit and find the best option if you don't see a win. Yeah, that's enough, that's enough, let's start. E4, E5. D4, a center game, a center game. It, it, it is basically an opening where you perhaps go for gambits. This is the most uh, gambit line. This is the Danish gambit. Or perhaps play f5. <laughs> Just don't take it. Play f5. Yeah, we're getting out of 900s with this one. Not the thousands, but 800s. <laughs> so this is a very crazy opening that I that I practiced and uh, yeah when he takes I take this way um, a trade of f and e d, d pawns a trade of f and d pawns which means that queen h5 checks are quite a welcome checks there so queen d4 actually happens targeting this pawn and it's tough to defend it you can go queen h4 that, but then g3 so no you can go just knight c6 takes and then add pressure to it maybe or you can play d5 d5 put two pawns in the center when you can you could argue that yes there is en passant wow what where did that move come from but actually if it takes you take with the queen he takes with check you play bishop e6 maybe he develops the knights but then you develop the knight with tempo he has to move again, perhaps gives a check again, but then you develop the knight. And look at these pieces, ready to attack that king. That would be very dangerous. But instead he goes queen a4 check, uh, allowing c6, making a connect 4 on move 5. I have already won the game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> knight f3, oh, wait, that's, that's, uh, that's a weird move. That simply hangs the knight. Now a thousand should be able to see this, right? No. That's actually such a surprising move that you would not even think that your opponent plays it. But let's allow that. Let's allow a thousand level game that maybe it got it meant 92 and then 94. 96. Uh, that is the best move, but it allows the breaking the structure. And the king is in the center still. I could have played bishop there, maybe to trade off the bishops, and then play knight e7 and castle. I think this... Yeah, shut up, Stockfish. You don't know anything. You don't know anything about 900 ELO players. Let's just say that this was not good. Bishop d7. It allows e6, but... Okay, we develop, we develop. Um, yeah, just develop pieces. He takes this way. But now does that allow c5? Double attack if he takes knight b5, a6 then. This is a very nice tactic. Yes, it happens. He takes on d5. We, what is happening? He's Oh no, sadly this doesn't work, sadly this doesn't work, because the rook is hanging, you cannot develop the knight, ay ay ay, you must castle here. Look at your opponent's pieces, they whistle as a, it's all very dangerous, perhaps just castle and leave those pieces to be, he could even blunder anywhere like this and blunder the queen. So keep the tension because this rook is hanging. If 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 takes, then takes with check. And uh, okay, now yes, these two pass pawns are too much. But instead, I take the pawn and lose the rook. All right then, let's uh, let's march forward. I'm not allowing the knight move to move. Which is a good concept, but you are very late to the party here. Uh, queen is coming to... What was that? 
you just you just need to castle here even if e6 happens then you can move the bishop uh, you can you can give a check the lines get very complicated you can you can go in but if this happens i go back now there's a weakness here i don't know d6 happens uh yes fight on fight on this is not lost yet i can i can assure you that this is not lost yet you can find the king is still in the center castles no it doesn't happen instead take and then play the knight out okay i think i like that because the queen is the only active piece here the queen here is the only active piece does he castle no he plays e6 but that allows me to castle well, a move, it's the best move because if he takes the knight, which he did in the game, but there are also different lines. You can also sacrifice the bishop. He cannot even take. I mean, he can, but if he takes and blocks with the queen, I mean, yes. Actually, e7 was the best move because if you take, then you can block with the queen, but maybe they don't see it and move the king. And lines get very dangerous here. But he takes the knight, and now that allows me to go. We. No. Queen of six here to go. Cut off the king. Go for checkmate. If queen of six, rook f1, there is even checks. Oh, you're attacking this rook as well. But I think checks here are very dangerous as well. I go rook f7 trying to eliminate these pawns and he cannot really defend but yeah he finds the pinning move so i take here this way he takes there i check but wait what has happened here he he did not play the correct move here because yes he saw a free pawn but that gives me checks right check there he cannot block anymore he has to move the king he has to move the king. You are down four minutes here. And you are down a rook. A rook and three pawns. You are down a rook and a three pawns. And if you trade down, you will never win. If you trade queens, you will never win here. So you have to give checks. And I would say here, this is very tough to see. You, you, you either win or you lose. But if you don't win... If you don't find the win, make sure you don't lose. You can just repeat the position and go for a draw here. Because you are down to two minutes. The best here is to take the queen, take take the pawn and not give checks. That's the only capture here. And uh, you are threatening this bishop check. If check there, then king moves. He has no more checks. He has no more checks, actually. And yes, okay, you could play knight d2 and blunder mate. It's tough to find this. But I did not find queen takes g2. I played bishop e3 attacking the queen. Now, okay, yes. There is check. But I played rook f8, which allows to trade queens. Sadly, it was very difficult position. The king was open, there are many checks. But basically, yes, if you move the rook, you have to look for your opponent's checks. And the concept here is that you never trade queens here. You don't allow a queen trade. You don't allow a queen trade. You, yes. But that happened. I even hanged the queen. Because I don't see it. Which is why you need to make a draw if you don't see anything at this point as well. So, yeah. The game ends as follows. I mean, he hung the pawn, but I'm running down on time. And this happens. So, we had a center game. Some gambit that turned out to be just fine for us. And we did not take him in the piece. We, we were winning on move 6 on this, but fine. We had a very conceptual game. Some... 
undeveloped pieces very tough to develop pieces you cannot develop the bishop basically only here and then there very tough to play this i would say but yes we played this tactic which did not work we should have played taking there or knight c6 very tough to say we thought we were accomplishing here something but we did not so that was our mistake but the games are crazy the games are really crazy as you sacrifice the knight and you still can win you still can win like this you have to be patient here you have to not make quick moves here because if you have a minute and you are still completely getting a mate then it's all worth it to spend that half a minute here i gave a check quickly i gave a check here quickly and i did not give checks further perhaps giving the checks further or taking stuff is the best way to go because once you attack the queen it give, gets give give checks himself so yes sadly and here the game was lost sadly if you like this video i thank you so much let me help you help you and we'll see you in the next one so see ya bye